I'm Gabrielle Degas, and I'm the lantern artist for the Kaleido Festival. Today we are making two different types of lanterns. This is a balloon lantern that's kind of similar to paper mache, so it's fairly simple. And then this is another lantern that kind of stands and you put a light in the bottom. I define lanterns as a hollow 3D sculpture that light can pass through. So when building a lantern, you can really use your own creativity. You don't have to go with these types of styles. There are all sorts of styles out there. You can recycle and use old milk jugs. You can use paper, you can use plastics, really anything that you think light can pass through and can create a 3D sculpture. So every year the Kaleido Festival holds a lantern making uh, workshop and then we have a parade that kicks off the rest of the festival for the rest of the weekend. Um, this year because of social distancing we can't do that workshop but I still wanted to show you guys how to make these lanterns if you want to make them at home. We're inviting the public to build these lanterns at home and bring them down to us so that we can hang them on our floats during the parade section of the festival. Okay so today we are building two different lanterns. This is our first lantern. You can, the cool thing about this lantern is that you can have it sit like this, sit like this, or you can put a string in it and hold it like a basket kind of. And then this is our second lantern. It's made with a poster board paper to create a firm ring. And then the paper within is really any paper you're choosing as long as it passes light through it. So, for these lanterns, we use a thin paper, usually just uh, tissue paper from the dollar store that you'd usually stick inside presents. We glue it on with uh, clear um, glue, so anything that, that dries clear. You can use any brush of your choosing, I just use these cheap little ones. And then construction paper to make the designs on the lanterns. So for this lantern, we use a poster board paper so it's thicker and holds its shape better. Uh, for the design aspect on the inside, um, I use a washi paper. You can buy this at um, Delta or Paint Spot or any of the uh, art craft stores in the city. Um, you can design your pictures with crayons or with paint, especially when you're using the washi paper. And I hot glue everything together with hot glue, but you can also staple along the edges or use regular white glue if you're willing to wait. So for this project, um, you're gonna wanna start with a balloon. The size that you blow your balloon up will depend on how big your lantern is. So obviously the bigger that you go, the bigger your lantern will be. However, with that, the, the bigger you go, the longer it will take you to paper it. So if you, do, if you do have smaller children or you're more impatient like myself, you're probably gonna wanna go significantly smaller. <laughs> so that's the start. I like taking the balloon here and putting it through my fingers to hold it like that. Just an easier way to hold it. So you just apply uh, glue straight to the balloon and then take your sheets of tissue paper that you've pre-torn and stick them straight on with a little bit more glue over top just to lay everything flat. I like to start at the bottom so that I can get a great line where my top of my lantern is. And you just keep going like this all the way around. Got stuff stuck to my hands. Joys of glue. All the way around. And when you've made it all the way around, then you start making your way up. You're gonna do this in layers, um, all the way around the lantern, about five to six times. And I'll just set that to the side. I'll go straight to this one. So this is what it's gonna look like once you have all your layers on. If you notice it is getting thick in places, so you almost think that you can't see through it, but once the balloon is gone, you're able to uh, see through all of this. So once you have a thick enough layer, you're gonna stick your last glue on and start putting your design on. And you can put any design on here that you want. I just cut a sun shape 
out of some construction paper. But you can make blue clouds. You can make hearts. Anything you want to make. Now, if you have the time to do this, you could pick flowers from your garden, stick them inside a book to flatten and dry them, and then stick those onto the lantern as well. That does take about two months to do though, for the flowers to dry. So once you've completed your desired uh, design on your balloon, you're gonna then take another layer of your tissue just to seal that design in so it doesn't crack off later. And it might look fairly milky right now where you've put the paper on, but once the lantern is complete, it will look very clear again. So for this demonstration, I have brought in the balloon uh, dry for the designing portion, but you don't have to wait for the balloon to be dry to put the designs on. You can do all of these steps in one go in one day, or you can do it over the course of multiple days. Once the lantern is complete and you have your finished designs and all of the steps have been completed, now you want to wait for your lantern to dry as long as possible, typically 24 hours. If you pop the balloon too early and the the lantern inside is still a little bit wet, it'll tear in places. So try and wait as long as possible before popping your balloon. So once the balloon is dry completely after about 24 hours, you can pop the balloon within. Woo! And there you have your lantern. Now if your balloon did stick to your lantern, it might bring the lantern in like this but you can always pop this lantern back into place. It is an extremely forgiving lantern. The only thing with this design is that these, this is water soluble glue. So don't leave your lantern out in the rain. It will get soggy and just fall into pieces. A little moisture is okay though. So for this type of lantern, it's a very simple design. You just cut out two sheets from your, um, giant sheet of paper and then you cut out a piece of your either uh, washi paper or any other paper that you choose to use to fit perfectly within that frame. So when connecting these two pieces together you don't have to use hot glue. You can use a stapler, you can use regular white glue. Try and make it as straight as possible. And do the same on the other side. So now that you have your frame on your paper, you can flip it over. And this is when you can create your design on your lantern while it's still flat. So you can do that with pencil crowns, and if you used washi paper, you can use watercolor paints. Now, you want to use watercolor paints instead of acrylic because the light will still pass through the watercolor. So today I'm going to work with watercolors, and I think I'm just going to do a quick and simple sun. So depending on the medium you've used, just wait for it to dry completely before rolling your lantern into its final shape. 
So flip your lantern over so that the, uh, the glue line is on the outside now, so that when you roll it, it's on the inside again. Try and glue it the same distance in on both sides. See that you don't have any weird warping on your paper. And then just glue this line down. there you have it. So now that we've talked about these two lanterns here, which is more simple, you can also create more complex designs like this. I've soldered these lines together, but you can do things like uh, tape your lines together or uh, spin the wire around itself to, to connect it. And then once your wire sculpture is complete, you paper it with the same type of paper that you'd use for either of these lanterns. Again, you can paint this design or keep it white. Usually for uh, these types of lanterns, you create your color through your lights. So you can use colored lights or white lights. Now, if you're interested in doing one of these style lanterns, it is a little bit more complicated. I can't get in depth on this video, but if you're interested, you can go on Gab's Does Art on my YouTube channel. And I do not too in depth, but I do go over how to do these types of lanterns. You can find that information below in the description.